Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in a green meadows. He lets me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right path, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a fest for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor by anointing my head with oil, my cups overflows with blessings. Surely, your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Verse 15, verse 2. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God, and I will praise Him, my Father's God, and I will exalt Him. Yes. Good afternoon once again, MCF family. Uh, in all circumstances, in all tragedies, in all challenges and um, struggles that we have right now, there's always a reason to be thankful and to be grateful sa Panginoon na patuloy tayong magpasalamat for His steadfast love endures forever. Amen? Um, Lord, whatever happens, nandito kami, patuloy na mahapagpuri kami sa iyo. Amen. So, it's really um, an opportunity na patuloy tayong makapag-serve sa Kanya. Amen? Amen? Amen. So, let us sing all together. Langit ang aking nadarama.
Watch over me. Clear. 
Good afternoon, brethren. It is a privilege again for me to communicate or impart to you the Word of God on this Lord's Day. And times like this, we need to really take heed to what God has to say to us, especially amidst the pandemic crisis. Our text is found in Psalm chapter 46, the entire chapter comprising 11 verses. The background of uh, the uh, psalm is that at the time, Sennacherib in the almost 8th century BC, was vent or even on the verge of invading the kingdom of Judah in the south. The background of this story is found in chapters 18 and 19 of Second Kings. We know in ancient history that Sennacherib of Assyria was one of the most ruthless emperors known in human history. And it was really a real test for the kingdom of Judah. They didn't know what to do because of the power, the military power of King Sennacherib. If Sennacherib would be successful in invading the kingdom of Judah, there will be a massive and enormous destruction of the entire kingdom of Judah. So this is the historical background that the song or psalm chapter 46 was written. It was written as a book of consolation, a song of consolation. Here we find the thought of God's might, His protecting care, and His ability to defeat and shatter Israel's enemies. In other words, this chapter of Psalms, Psalm 46, is a holy confidence in the God who was mighty and able to protect and defend the kingdom of Israel and specifically the kingdom of Judah. So this psalm calls for the God of Jacob. Without hope, nothing is impossible. And at that time, they seemed to be hopeless. But because of this psalm that called them to once again put their hope in God, that gave them a new perspective in life, that gave them new encouragement 
in times like that in their days. Well, when you talk of hope, it says that with hope, nothing is impossible. It is true if that hope is not in hope itself. It must be hope in God. Biblically, hope is feeling of trust. In other words, biblically, hope and faith are twin sisters. They are called as Siamese twins, shall we say. Hope or faith in God, according to this psalm, chapter 46, assures us, first of all, of help in trouble. Because hope it's not just wishful thinking, but it is a firm assurance about things that are unseen and still in the future. It is from God, and it is directed toward God. So hope or faith in God assures, number one in our message, help in trouble. Verses 1 to 3 read, God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Help in trouble trouble. That's what hope or faith in God assures us. We read here, and it's a fact in life too, that we are surrounded by enemies. Enemies are real in life. We can never deny nor escape from them. And the enemies in life and also described in this chapter, verses 1 to 3, are real and they are inward or outward. Fears within and tumults without. We see that all around us happening. We see all the tumults, the calamities happening, the floods, the hurricanes. The tornadoes. How about the anarchy, the torching of business buildings in the streets, in the cities, not only in the United States of America, but all around the world? It could happen, and it's happening. So it's the outside enemies, but because of them, they bring fear. They bring f f f hopelessness. They bring the sense of helplessness deep in us. Fears within and fears and tumults without. So we see here the physical description of catastrophes all around us, like the tsunamis, the storms, the typhoons. But also we see catastrophes and calamities in a moral sphere of life. How about in political, social, emotional, and economic sphere of life? So enemies are real in life. They're not just imagined. They do happen outside, and then they happen inevitably inside us. But God is our refuge and strength. In spite of all of these natural disasters happening, the pandemic, the pestilence, all of this, Yes, they really are horrifying. But the psalmist here says, 
God is our refuge and strength. Verse 1. And the word refuge here means strength. The, words, the word refuge here means fortress. We are surrounded by hedges of protection. And we are sheltered by the strength and might of God where we are entirely safe and secure. We are impregnable with God. Even all of the powerful happenings around the catastrophes and the calamities, the pandemic, God is our defense. God is our protection. God is our fortress. And this is a real consolation for all of us. This gives us joy deep in our hearts. This gives us peace that surpasses all human knowledge. Why? Because when God helps, He helps right on time. A very present help in trouble. Literally, this means He is a very accessible helper. He helps us. He is easy to be found. He is not far away. He is not absent. He is not on furlough or on vacation that we could never have access to Him. Also, He is a tested help in trouble. That's the English by version. Thank God for here in Toronto, the greater Toronto, we have a wonderful services rendered by the firemen, the ambulance, and police. They do better job, generally speaking. And thank God for them. They are the first responders in times of emergency. And we have been recipients because of their services. But better still is our God. He is a perfect first responder. He is the God of the Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and according to the Apostle Paul, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So it is this faith or hope in God that gives true fearlessness. And this God, as described in verse 7 and verse 11, is the God, the Lord of hosts. This means he's the commander of heavenly armies. This talks about his power. He is almighty. He is omnipotent, all-powerful. Therefore, in verse 2, it says here, We will not fear. Fear sometimes creeps into us when we see all of the catastrophes and disasters happening outside and then fear grips our hearts inside us. But with God who is the impreg impregnable fortress of our souls, when we trust in Him, we will not fear. That's the first very important truth here. Faith and hope help in trouble. That is faith and hope in God. Second, faith and hope assures comfort in trouble. It doesn't only help in trouble. It also comforts in trouble. Verses 4 to 5 read, 
there is a river. The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the whole place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. God is our comfort in trouble. Here we see the beautiful imagery. It's a picturesque description. It's a picture of the pure river of the water of life, welling from the very throne of God and of the land. A river with its several streams. We see here a big body of river dividing into different rivulets and streams. This typifies the comfort of God in trouble as they are found in scriptures. God abundantly, like the rivulets spreading, the streams of water comfort us in many ways. We could not fully describe the wonders of God's comforting care for each one of us in times of our need, in times of emergency in our lives. The river with its several streams signifies comfort of God in trouble as they are found in scriptures. Isn't it true? That the scriptures are abundant source of divine comfort. Psalm 119, for example, verse 50. Psalm 119, verse 50. It reads, This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath given me life. The Apostle Paul also talks about this, that the scriptures are refreshing and life-giving to each one of us in our times of distress. They really comfort us. And the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, it reads, for whatever things were written in early times were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Beautiful expression that we are comforted by the scriptures in our times of need. How about 1 Thessalonians 4, 18? It says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. God's word, the scriptures, do comfort us in times of sorrow, in times of heartaches, in times of disappointments, in times of failures in our lives. You maybe can recall some specific instances in your life. I can in my own life. When and how God comforted me, comforted you in your times of sickness, in your times of dire need, in your times of brokenness, in your times of failures, God comforts us by the scriptures. How about in times of having our loved ones depart from us, that we deeply are hurt, we deeply are pained, and we deeply are affected 
sudden departure of our loved ones, the sudden death so unexpected by each one of us, of our loved ones, they really hurt. They really knock us down emotionally and many times physically and spiritually. But the Holy Scriptures are abundant in ways of comforting us in times like these. Through waves and clouds and storms, He gently clears the way. But conversely, as the Holy Scriptures are God's ways of comforting us, the world has ways also of trying to comfort us, but they do give us false hopes. They do give us the bandage, you know, or the band aid, cure or comfort, a fake comfort. Because we see here, there are other waters, there are other rivers in this life that pretend to comfort us, to give us joy, to give us satisfaction, only to fail, only to disappoint us. They will never give us genuine satisfa satisfaction. Only from the streams that flow from the very throne of God that we find comfort from the scriptures. God is in the midst of her. That's the guarantee why we truly are never failed by the scriptures in matters of comforting us because God is in the midst of her. Verse 5. In other words, the presence of God makes a real difference. We can never have peace without the presence of God. Many think that peace is the absence of trouble. No. Peace is not in the absence of trouble, but it is in the presence of God. While the world is being turned upside down, the believer in God, the God of Jacob, according to the psalm, is unmoved because God is in the midst of her and we shall not be moved. Verse 5. Lastly, hope and trust in God assures us of help in trouble. It doesn't only assure us of help, but also it comforts us in times of trouble. But lastly, faith and hope in God delivers us from trouble. Verses 6 to 11, it reads, The heathen rage and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations hath he made in the earth? He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heaven. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Hope or trust delivers us from trouble. It is an unpopular biblical truth. And many, even believers, don't really appreciate it. That is, trials, sufferings in life 
are needful. They have their purpose. God allows all of them to happen even in the lives of the saints, the saved ones, the believers, because they have their purpose. God has a divine and sovereign purpose for each of them to happen in our life's pathway. It works, number one, for patience. It works for patience. We read in James chapter 1, verses 2 to 3, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. So God's purpose is for us to develop the character of patience. Second, God also wants us to be purified in our Christian lives. It's a purifying process. First Peter 1 Peter 1.7 says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Gold becomes purer when it is passed through the fire. We call that the fiery furnace. It must be tried through the fiery furnace. So that's God's purpose, to purify us. Job in chapter 23, verse 10, even praised and worship God because he said, After all, I have gone through the severe trials. I can come out or emerge as pure gold. Thirdly, God wants us to go through trials because it matures of Christian life. It makes us strong and mature. It makes us grow stronger. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 10. For they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure, but he for our own profit that we might be partaker of his holiness. It makes us holy. It makes us better and more godly and Christly in our Christian lives. That's what trials are for. In the streams and the desert, I came across with an article which says that we become perfect or become mature and complete through suffering. Steel is iron plus fire. That's an article on the streams in the desert. Soil is rock plus heat or glacier crushing. Linen is flax plus the bath that cleans the comb that separates, and the flail that pounds, and the shuttle that weaves. Human character must have a plus attached to it. The world does not forget great characters, but great characters are not made of luxuries. They are made by suffering. Suffering is a wonderful fertilizer to the roots of character. The great object of this life is character. This is the only thing we can carry with us into eternity. To gain the most of it and the best of it is the object of probation. So, brothers and sisters and friends, God has a purpose why he allows trials and sufferings to happen in our lives. But God delivers us from trouble 
All of this, he sees to it that his purpose is accomplished. He sends trials not to destroy us, but to build us up. God's deliverance always comes at the right time. This is so comforting, isn't it? Trials come and go. They never, never continue forever. They always have its God's appointed time to cease. It may be been it may be dark now, but the dawn of a brighter day is near. Verse five, the last part it says, and that right early. When God delivers, he delivers in his own appointed perfect time, and he is never too early nor too late, always at the right time, and that right early. So what to do in time of trouble? We've got to be patient and trusting. According to the psalmist here, beholding the work of the Lord, verse 8 up to verse 9, we've got to just fix our eyes upon Jesus. Look at the greatness of God and all of the trials that surround your life seem to shrink and become insignificant because God is great. So that's the first thing in times of trouble. Be patient and trusting by beholding the works of the Lord. Psalm 27, 13, it says, If I had fainted unless I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Second, being still, not only but just by just being patient and trusting, but also by being still and know that He is God. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. Waiting on the Lord is very important. Just wait. Be still. Because we know God is on the driver's seat. He is in charge. The promise is the God of Jacob, the Lord of hosts, is with us. So let's wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. So brothers and sisters and friends, hope and trust for the troubled times? Yes, because the true and living God, the God of Jacob, will help in trouble. He will comfort in trouble and he will deliver us in trouble. Now to those who are going through difficulties, to those who are going through severe trials nowadays, this psalm is for you. The psalm is specifically for you. And may you truly have that real comfort from God. Thank you. I can take a heart that's broken, make it all.
Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. Announcement. Zoom Bible study every Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Men's fellowship every Tuesday and Friday at 8.30 p.m. Acts fellowship every Friday at 8.30 p.m. And women's Bible study or prayer meeting every Saturday at 5.30 p.m. November birthday celebrants. November 1st, Sister Marites. November 12, Nicole and Sister Eileen. November 17, Sister Cynthia Scano. November 20, Tatay Artur. November 21st, Sister Ella. November 22nd, Sister Marisol. And November 30th, Andrea. Tithes and Offering. Hebrews 13, verse 16. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. MCF members who are capable and are willing to give, please direct your tithes and offering to Sister Luvella through e-transfer. Prayer request. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. For those who need assistance or prayer, you may call MCF leaders. Once again, Church, uh, that concludes our Sunday online worship service. And as always, we would like to thank all those people who have participated uh, in this Sunday uh, online worship service. Especially to uh, Pastor Elisir Catanos who have uh, expound that message regarding Psalms 46 and uh, hopefully that would help us uh, be inspired especially in times of trouble so uh, with that said let's now come to our closing prayer and benediction so let's come to the Lord in prayer our Heavenly Father God Lord once again we would like to thank you for this time uh, that you have given us the chance to congregate Lord God even through our uh, Zoom online worship service. Lord, uh, we thank you for uh, that inspiring message that was delivered to us through your servant, Pastor Elas here, that, uh, that we are all reminded, Lord God, that uh, you give us help, comfort, and deliver us, Lord, in times of trouble. And uh, Lord, we pray, uh, especially for this time of pandemic, uh, that would serve as an inspiration, Lord God. And uh, Lord, we pray that uh, as we continue with our Christian life, as we proceed uh, with our daily life, Lord God, that uh, we might be able to encourage other people as well. Lord, once again, we thank you for your love, for your mercy, and for your guidance to each and every one of us. And Lord, 
we would like to take this opportunity as well to ask Lord God for your divine intervention uh, for this pandemic that is happening around us. Lord, we pray that uh, you will deliver us, Lord God, from this trouble and uh, that soon uh, enough, Lord God, that we will have a solution for this. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for uh, your continuous uh, provision and blessing to each and every one of us. We even entrust to you, Lord God, our lives as we continue with our week. And Lord, we pray that you will uh, bring us back together, Lord God, next Sunday uh, for our next Sunday uh, Zoom online worship service and even through our uh, Bible study during the week. Thank you and we love you, Lord. And now, church, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is in work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Keep safe and hope we could see all soon. Oh